don't know, sometimes you get the feeling when you just feel like only you're getting rained on when you're trying to spray. Peter back again, folks, development block. You'll notice that there's maybe a little bit of noise. Tiny two down there with Brad on it. Just uh, reshaping a contour bank and clearing a little bit of, or making the, the pathway clean. A few days ago, you'll notice this is pretty rough here. The sticks and a lot of regrowth, um, invasive uh, woody weeds and uh, pine seedlings and just regrowth. This is a country that was farmed a few years, quite a few years ago, um, or a little bit under 30 years. But uh, and so it's okay for us to do this, um, and we need to clear it out so that we can get the contours um, working as it should. So I'm going to have a crack at lighting up this pile here. We'll see how it goes. on the weeded as you can see behind me don't know sometimes you get the feeling when you just feel like only you're getting rained on when you're trying to spray so obviously it's raining you can see on the window the sun shining no rain clouds out there no real rain clouds out there even up there not much so I don't quite know what this means for my spray job. What usually happens is if you you need to wait off, oh, different chemicals obviously it's a different time, but usually you want a good few hours um, for the chemical to be out before rain comes. Um, otherwise, obviously the water washes the chemical off the leaves of the plant. And also you've got to wait a certain amount of time after rain before you can plant, uh, before you can spray because there's an excess of water still on the leaves, so when you spray it with chemical, it will dilute it and just and the chemical will wash off too. Um, so I might just have to wait here for 10 minutes or so and I'll just see whether it dries out. I know it's been about five to seven minutes, somewhere around there, uh, since we had that quick shower and the sun is hot and looks like everything's dried up pretty well here. So what I would just want to check is if I can find a weed. I just want to make sure there's no moisture still on it. Which there will be a little bit. You can see there's a little bit there, but it's not much at all. So won't be long at all and I'll be back into it, particularly with this sun blazing down. So while we wait, this is a Croplands weed it. Now this particular model is actually a 24 meter sprayer, but it was built as a 36 meter sprayer, but we just got them to, um, yeah, take the extra wings off and, and modify it. Reason for that is, so later down the track, if we wanted to convert this to 36, because that's what we'd love to have, um, because with your tram lines, 
we've got a 12 meter planter so we've got a tram line there say and then 12 meters there 12 meters there 12 meters there and then with your sprayer if it's 36 meters you go down the middle and it all matches up with all your tram lines this being 24 meters it still matches up with the tram lines but it it sort of yeah it doesn't work as well with the boundaries of your your paddocks now the reason for not having a 36 meter one straight up was each of these cameras here are about five thousand dollars and who knows they could be more now so there's one of them every meter so if we added another 12 meters onto this then you've got an extra sixty thousand dollars just there plus you've got on the 36 meter models you've got an extra pivot wheel that's out to here and obviously all the other boom um the length of the boom and everything like that so at the time we couldn't justify i think it was maybe about another hundred thousand dollars or so to go for a 36 meter and yeah that was a bit bit hard to cop up that extra um and so far we haven't really missed it like it still still does a good enough job for us and um we've done quite a lot of work with it how it basically works is you have camera and then you've got five nozzles in that section now that camera there detects the chlorophyll in the plants and there's a little red light there you can see shines down and then the cameras detect that they sense when there's chlorophyll so anything green and then obviously it knows when to fire on these solenoids and it sprays the weeds um, very difficult to get anything reliably sort of smaller than about that um, it will get most of weeds that sort of size like maybe 70 to 80 percent of them um, but when you get up when you get up to this size you're virtually getting well over 95 percent of them um, so that's what you want to target and because it's, you're not going through a lot of chemical you can afford to come back every two weeks and do it and that way you can keep on top of the bigger weeds one of the real benefits is you can have quite an expensive brew in the sprayer so you can have different chemicals in there that are quite expensive to spray and it would cost quite a lot of money if you were to just um, apply it uh, as you would normally because you're spraying every single um, square meter of the paddock whereas with this um, rough figures it's generally you want to keep it around that 10 percent so you technically using only 10% of the chemical that you would have otherwise used plus you can go on at a heavier rate um, without it becoming expensive and also you can really drench the weeds as they're going under because um, I think the equivalent is on this is about 160 litres a hectare um, whereas when we're spraying normally it's anywhere between the 50 and 80 maybe sometimes 100 litres per hectare um, so yeah we can really get these um, weeds absolutely drenched and obviously that helps to uh, for the chemical to work on them we've been really happy with it anyway and I think we've had it for it must be four or five years now and there's a few little things that happen if you get we did have one of the filters um, burst the little gauze filter so it sent a fair bit of rubbish through here and obviously all these solenoids very fine tolerances so we have been having a few issues with them blocking up and yeah it's, it's painful but I think we're on top of most of that now and we should should have a good run out of it now hopefully a lot of people have a separate hot tank up here which all that does is it means that this tank is being used and, and there's another set of nozzles that are on the whole time, so it's just like a normal sprayer. But then there's a separate tank which you can have a different um, mixture of chemical in, and then it, it, the cameras control that. So when you come across an actual big weed, it hits it with the different chemical or just the same chemical, so it's getting a double dose. And it, um, yeah, means the big weeds are getting got um, but if there's any real small weeds, like I said, these cameras don't pick up the real small ones. And so by having it a blanket spray on as well, you're getting all of them. So it would be handy um, in a lot of situations, but for us, uh, the decision was made just to stick with this, just use this as a camera sprayer. 
and we've got the other sprayers for, for doing the other jobs. Just ignore that. I had nothing to do with that. It involved flicking the wrong switch and this getting jammed up onto the tread of the tyres. So that was a little embarrassing. But uh, yes, we've got that gusseted and it uh, actually has held up really well. So this is your fill point here. You just pop that off, it's a two inch cam lock and you choose where you want it to go. Now we don't have a spot tank here, um, but we do have a flush tank, 400 litre flush tank. And so you just put your water into there, pump it in, you can choose to main tank or flush tank and all your chemical can go through that. Um, there's a flow meter here you can use and that way you know what's going in. Now we did modify this down here. So we do have a tank on the front of the 280 here which we've plumbed this into, so we can use that as well if we want. We often don't need to, but um, what we've done is hooked an extra tap into here, so we can use this high pro, which is the hydraulic pump, which pumps all the product through and, and pressurizes the system. And we can hook our two inch cam lock from a tank without a pump and suck um, using this high pro to fill the tank. So it just means if we are out contracting and there's no pump available, we can fill up. That too means that with our, uh, if you need to suck chemical out of drums or shuttles or whatever it is, we can, yeah, do that through here. So we've got our lever here. Um, when you're spraying, you obviously want it on spray. When you want to just mix the chemical and, and agitate it, you'd go to that. And then when you want to use the probe, you flick it around to that and then that'll suck um, chemical through that. So it all, um, yeah, it's it's quite a neat bit of gear. It's quite messy, obviously. It's we've been getting a bit of rain and paddocks are still quite a bit wet. So it's not ideal, but um, yeah, we need to get on it. So I reckon we're gonna be ready to go. Can't see any moisture on that. So I'll get into it. videos ago I think it was uh, we had some issues with this overheating and we would come out after it was sitting for a while we'd, you'd go back out in the paddock and start working and the temperature there would go right up pretty well into the red and then after a little bit, bit you'd knock it back a year or two and then it would settle back down but it was still running quite warm and what I did is you'll have to go back and check out on the video but I put some bolts um, through the viscous hub because there was evidence of it, it the, the oil out of the hub was leaking so obviously it, it can't work like it's meant to and it wasn't the fan wasn't blowing hard enough so it wasn't able to draw as much air through to keep the engine cool so it is locked solid now and we've got temperature is smack bang where we want it and that is obviously just telling us that the thermostat's working because it, it's not moving up and down as we uh, as there's different loads it just stays at that temperature so uh, yeah very good result there and we've got the monitor here for the weed it you can see here it's flashing up on all the different cameras that are triggering um, when it's a little bit wet like it is sometimes they trigger more than they should like there's not actually a weed there but they're triggering um, 
chips. So yeah, the, you do use a little bit more chemical, but yeah, we need to get this done. Righto, we're back up the shed here. Um, we got all that spraying done, so that is good. Uh, we're just gonna have maybe a couple of days of contracting to do. So yeah, that might be the end of the video for now. We'll catch you in the next one.